On the same Argand diagram, shade the region which satisfies both the modulus of Z minus 4 minus 4i is less than or equal to 8, and the modulus of Z plus 2 minus 2i is greater or equal to Z plus 1 plus 3i. By now we should be able to recognise this will give me a uh, circle with a radius of 8 and that this will give me the perpendicular bisector of minus 2 plus 2i and minus 1 minus 3i. Okay, so let's find the um, Cartesian um, representation of each inequality. So take the first one, we've got z minus 4 minus 2i is less than or equal to 8. z is equal to x plus iy. So we'll just replace z with x plus i, y. We've got minus 4 minus 2i is less than or equal to 8. Technique is to group together the real and the imaginary part. So the real bit is x minus 4 and the imaginary part is y minus 2. So we get the absolute value of x minus 4 plus i minus 2 is less than or equal to 8. Then we use the idea that the modulus is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. But instead of using the modulus, let's use the modulus squared. And then we don't have to deal with any square root signs. So we've got x minus 4 squared plus y minus 2 squared is equal to 8 squared. And we should reckon it's less than or equal to, sorry, because it's an inequality. So if we draw uh, x squared x minus 4 or squared plus y minus 2 or squared is equal to 8 squared, it will represent a circle center 4, 2 and radius 8. Right, for the other inequality, the modulus of z plus 2 minus 2i is greater or equal to z plus 1 plus 3i. Then we, if we use the fact that z is equal to x plus i, y, then replacing z as x plus i, y plus 2 minus 2i. That's the modulus of, and then the modulus of x plus i, y plus 1 plus 3i. Group together the real and the imaginary bit. So the real bit from this is x plus 2. So we've got the modulus of x plus 2. The imaginary bit is y minus 2 plus i, y minus 2. It's greater or equal to the real bit here is x plus 1. So the modulus of x plus 1 and the imaginary bit will be y plus 3. So i times y plus 3. Then use the idea that the modulus is the square root of x squared plus y squared. Again, use the squared version. It's probably better. Z, modulus z squared is x squared plus y squared. That means I can now say that x plus 2 squared plus y minus 2 squared is greater or equal to x plus 1 squared plus y plus 3 all squared. Expanding this, we get x squared plus 4x plus 4. Expanding y minus 2 all squared, we get y squared minus 4y plus 4. It's greater or equal to x squared plus 2x plus 1. And expanding this, we get y squared plus 6y plus 9. The x squares will cancel out and the y squares will cancel out. And then we've got minus 4y minus 6y, which gives minus 10y. It's greater or equal to minus 2x, taking the 4 over there, and they've got 4 plus 4, 8, uh, 9, uh, minus, uh, 9 plus 1 is 10, 10 minus 8 gives me plus 2, dividing through by minus 10, we're going to get, now when you divide by a negative sign on inequality, the sign needs to be changed, so we're going to get minus 2 over minus 10, which is 1 fifth, and then 2 over minus 10, which is minus 1 fifth. Don't forget, the inequality sign must be reversed at that point. Right, we will need to draw the line y is equal to 1 fifth of x minus 1 fifth. Okay, to draw the Argand diagram, we've got z is 4 plus 2i, and that's the Cartesian equivalent of what we've got to do. z1 is minus 2 plus 2i, z2 is minus 1 minus 3i. And our Cartesian inequality is y less than one fifth x minus one fifth. So nice large axis. So we'll need to mark on the point four two. That's the point four two i. And then we need to draw a circle around that point with radius eight. The line is a little bit more difficult. Uh, so we're going to mark on z one and z two. 
Okay, so when um, x is 1, y will be 0. If we put 1 in there, we've got 1 fifth, 1 is 1 fifth. So that would be a good starting point. Okay, and then once we've done that, a gradient of 1 fifth, because that's what it is, is for every 5 along, we go 1 up. So that will help me draw the line. Okay, take my ruler, I can join those points up. Label that we've got uh, with the... Um, complex uh, in a uh, complex equation so it's z plus modulus of z plus 2 minus 2 i is equal to the modulus of z plus 1 plus 3 i now which side of the uh, line do we need to shape but first of all less than or equal to 8 for the circle will be inside the circle so either we're going to shade this bit here or we're going to end up shading this bit here so we need to test a point to see which side of the line we can shade some of you will be able to say straight away so I'm going to take the point 0.51. The reason I took 5 is it will cancel with the one fifth here. There's a point 0.51. That's this side. Right, so y is minus 1, and we've got one fifth of 5 minus 5. I don't know the inequality I'm going to put in here, which what makes that correct. So we've got one fifth, and then one fifth of 5 is 1. 1 minus 5 is 4 fifths. Well, minus 1 is less than 4 fifths. We wanted less than or equal to, so that point was in the region. And because we're shading the region that we want, that will be that region. So the shading region is now represented by both inequalities. Z minus 4 minus 2i less than or equal to 8. And Z plus uh, 2 minus 2i is greater or equal to Z plus 1 plus 3i. Okay, a little bit quick there, but we have uh, a GeoGebra app for you. And the link to the judge map will be in the notes of this video. So we just have a look at this um, judge map. Here we have our circle. Here we have our line. Notice the line is the perpendicular bisector. Okay, and if I click down here, okay, it will give me the shading region uh, that I want. Notice um, it, we're doing e less than or equal to, or there's an equal. So. We will include points on the line. If we were doing just less than or greater than, we need to represent the line and the circle with uh, dashed lines. And the great thing about this app, of course, you can change things around a bit and everything will change with it. Okay, so it will shade the right region for you for that inequality. That's, that's the good thing about this um, GeoGebra app. Okay, and if you refresh it, or just go back to its starting position for the particular example I've done for the video. Okay, I hope you have uh, hope you've uh, understood, and and I uh, hope this video has been helpful. Again, I remind you the GeoGebra app will be in the notes of the video. Thank you very much for watching.